Well, thanks for everything, Herc. It's been a real slice. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 funniest female Disney characters. Oh yes, I want a steering wheel. Do 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 boop wow. For this list, we'll be looking at the greatest female characters in Disney movies who never fail to make us laugh. Did we miss your favorite Disney funny woman? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Mama Odie, The Princess and the Frog Quite honestly, there are so many hilarious characters in this movie, but Mama Odie manages to stand out even with her limited amount of screen time. Oh, you! <laughs> Come on over here, you bad boy! Get a little sugar now. <laughs> what else would you expect from the voodoo priestess of the bayou? At 197 years old, she's like everyone's crazy grandma. And who doesn't love a wacky mother figure? Her sage wisdom is always doled out with a sarcastic comment or witty joke, and she also mixes in some physical comedy for good measure. Conducting her flamboyance of flamingos singing as her choir or using her pet snake as a walking stick, it's all hilariously characteristic. Don't matter what you wear. How many rings you got on your finger? We don't care, no, we, we don't, don't care. care. Plus, her laugh itself is infectious. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Number 19, Anna Coleman, Freaky Friday. Look at me. I know, we seem to be inside. I'm old. I beg your pardon. Oh, I'm like the crib. Keeper! Okay, that's enough. What makes this character so funny is in large part due to the actress playing her. We're not knocking the small portion of the movie where Lindsay Lohan performs as Anna. She does a solid job of playing the character too. But as you'll remember, the majority of this movie sees Anna in Jamie Lee Curtis's body. In typical teen behavior, Anna is whiny and entitled and overall generally pretty unlikable. With Curtis at the helm though, it goes off without a hitch. Whether it's crowd surfing at the talk show or flirting with Chad Michael Murray, the whole thing is a real laugh. When I'm not with you, I lose my mind. Give me a sign. Hit me, baby, one more time. <laughs> Number 18. Disgust Inside Out With a name like Disgust, you pretty much know what to expect right off the bat. She is never pleased with anything and has no problem voicing her, well, Disgust. All right, just a few more blocks. We're almost to our new house. Step on it, Daddy. Why don't we just live in this smelly car? We've already been in it forever. This is another character who could have easily come off as unlikable. Complaining about everything is definitely not the most attractive quality. But solid, clever writing and a stellar vocal performance from Mindy Kaling managed to make the character relatable and cool. Her witty cracks are unmatched, and she adds a sense of comic relief to what is mostly a fairly intense movie. What? Of course your tiny brain is confused. Guess I'll just have to dumb it down to your level. Sorry I don't speak moron as well as you, but let me try. <laughs> Number 17, Frida Kahlo, Coco. Don't be fooled by Hector disguising himself as her. The actual Frida Kahlo in this movie is positively hilarious. Based on the real-life Mexican artist, this fictionalized version of what she might be like in the afterlife is lively and levitating. And from the darkness, a giant papaya. Dancers emerge from the papaya, and the dancers are all me. When Miguel first meets Kahlo, she's working on a performance piece which heavily showcases who else but herself. In life, this artist mainly painted self-portraits, which led to this animated reimagining being comically self-centered. Her performance piece with all the dancers and even the cactus dressed up as her is simply iconic, and honestly, one of the best scenes in the film. And what if everything was on fire? Yes, fire everywhere! Inspired! You, you have the spirit of an artist. Number 16, Daniela Paguro, Luca. Maya Rudolph does it again. At this point, any character portrayed or voiced by her is bound to be funny. Most of Daniela's humor comes from her chastising Luca about going up to the surface. Luca, where have you been? Uh, don't say surface, don't say surface. Surface? Huh? What did you just say? She's the poster woman of a worried mother, and it's as funny as it is recognizable. Just look at that smoldering stare from the shadows. Only a mother can stare like that. 
The best scene is the one where she ventures out to the surface to find her son, discovers soccer, and just obliterates all the neighborhood kids. Uh, uh, honey? Hey, guys. Can I play, too? Oh, oh sorry. I'm not used to legs. <laughs> oh, okay. Dracula, get the ball! Oh, come and get it. <laughs> Number 15, Honey Best, The Incredibles. This character never even makes her way on screen, yet she's absolutely hysterical. There was an idea to have Honey make an appearance in the sequel, and the storyboard was even drawn up for it, but it was eventually abandoned in favor of keeping the gag of her disembodied voice consistent. Ah, how dare you! How dare you ask uh, your ah! own wife! Lucius, don't you think you can get away from me? Lucius! Yeah! Ah! When Frozone is looking for his supersuit to help the Incredibles take on Syndrome, he demands its location from his wife. With just a handful of sentences, she responds with arguably the funniest and most memorable line of the film. My evening's in danger! You tell me where my suit is, woman! We are talking about the greater good! Greater good? I am your wife! I'm the greatest good you are ever gonna get! Number 14, Madame Mim, The Sword in the Stone. Sounds like someone's sick. How lovely! <laughs> I do hope it's serious. Something dreadful! They don't call her the marvelous Mad Madame Mim for nothing. She's funny, but not exactly in the ha-ha way. She's this kind of doddering old loon type who's pretty off-putting to watch. Her title song where she changes into all the different creatures and things to intimidate Arthur is nothing short of terrifying. And it definitely made us uneasy when we were kids. Hey lad, did you know that I can make myself uglier yet? Well, that would be some trick. Or um, I mean, uh, want to bet? Boo! Oh. Even as an adult, it's undeniably creepy. Though we can appreciate the goofiness of her ways a little more now. She's got some subtle moments of memeable comedy and is generally all kinds of quirky. Magnificent and marvelous indeed. Number 13, Vanellope Von Schweetz, Wreck-It Ralph franchise. Part of Vanellope's humor comes from the irony of her character. To look at her, you might expect a sweet and saccharine voice accompanied by a sugar, spice, and everything nice kind of attitude. But that couldn't be further from Vanellope. Her sarcastic sense of humor and gritty voice completely counter her adorable appearance. One more, one more. Oh. Why did the hero flush the toilet? Say why. Why? Because it was his duty! It means that she's often underestimated, but that kind of works in her favor when she needs it to. She's also never shy about calling out Ralph, or pretty much anyone else with her nostalgic, slightly mean-spirited, childlike sense of humor. And truthfully, she's one of the only people in the arcade who has a head on her shoulders. You're saying if I just stare at some water... The important water. Right, <laughs> of course. Important water. I stare at the important water and somehow magically I'll start singing about my dream? For sure. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't think so, ladies, but thanks. Number 12, Anna, Frozen franchise. In spite of her difficult upbringing, Anna is just so optimistic and bright, nearly everything she says or does will make you smile. I'll be dancing through the night. Don't know if I'm elated or gassy, but I'm somewhere in that zone. To counter Elsa's intense storyline, Anna provides a little levity. She's clumsy and a bit of a fixer-upper herself, which makes for a lot of light, fun moments. It seems like she's always falling this way or that, which provides some subtle physical comedy, and her rambling style of speaking is also a nice tension breaker. Who could forget her back and forth with Kristoff on his sled? Classic. What's his last name? Uh, of the Southern Isles. What's his favorite food? Sandwiches. Best friend's name? Probably John. Eye color. Dreamy. Foot size? Foot size doesn't matter. Number 11, Charlotte LaBeouf, The Princess and the Frog. Her hyper and bubbly personality could easily be seen as annoying if it wasn't matched by her incredible sense of humor. As Tiana's sassy best friend, Charlotte never fails to deliver the perfect sarcastic comment or blunt criticism when necessary. When a woman says later, she really means not ever. Now run along. There are plenty of young fillies dying for you to waltz them into a stupor. In fact, her stereotypically superficial princess personality just makes it even funnier when it's mixed with her genuine down-to-earth side. Even as a little girl, she could make her best friend crack up, which speaks a lot to her character. She's never really trying to be funny so much as she just naturally is. Okay, honey lamb, we'll be waiting in the package.
Dennis does a car! Number 10, Grandmother Fa, Mulan. Grandmother Fa is your classic sassy grandma. Now add a cricket just for luck. And even you can't blow it. She's brutally honest, she has no filter, and she throws all types of shade. Who spit in her bean curd? Her comedic timing is absolutely perfect, like when she asks Li Shang to stay with them forever. Would you like to stay forever? And she has us cracking up when she crosses that crowded street with the lucky cricket, leaving a wave of destruction in her wake, and yet making it to the other side without so much as a scratch on her. Mulan is obviously awesome, but we kind of want to share a cup of tea with her grandmother. Number 9. Flora, Fauna, and Merryweather, Sleeping Beauty I'd like to turn her into a fat old hop toad. Now, dear, that isn't a very nice thing to say. Lucky Aurora, she basically has three sassy grandmas. Technically, they are her fairy godmothers, so their main job is to actually take care of Aurora. They use their magic to bake her a cake, make her a dress, and help her fight evil, of course. But their magic is at its best when being dished out in the form of their goofy wit. They fight with each other just like real sisters do. You know, just with a magical twist. It looks awful. That's because it's on you, dear. Their blue or pink fight is basically a magical slapstick comedy routine. <laughs> Number 8. Mia Thermopolis, The Princess Diaries Franchise from breaking Paolo's brash with her hair to ruining dinners, Mia serves as the cause for much hilarity on her journey to becoming a princess. The contrast between her and her grandmother is a constant source of laughter, starting with the moment that Clarice tells Mia she's a princess and Mia tells Clarice to shut up. Me? A, a princess? Shut up! Beg your pardon? Yes, her princess lessons are disastrously funny. But there's equally humor to be found in the way she stumbles through life in general. <laughs> are you okay? Poor Mia. She might not have been trying to be funny on purpose, but she definitely has us laughing. And as you see, usually when I ask a woman to dance, I always show her my family tree. Oh, well, aren't you just crafty? Number seven, Turk, Tarzan. Like all great animated Disney movies, Tarzan has a well-balanced mix of tear-jerking emotion and laugh-out-loud humor. There are a lot of funny characters in this film, but Turk is the most memorable and consistent source of laughter. Turk is Tarzan's sarcastic best friend who's always cracking jokes, pulling pranks, and getting herself into trouble. With the face and the eyes and the ah! All right! But don't make me do anything embarrassing. I'm gonna kill him! She never takes anything seriously, even when the intimidating Kerchak comes around. Oh, thank goodness you're all right! Carla and I have been so worried! Ow! Thank you. Thank you so much for finding him, Kerchak. You are such a wise and caring leader! Tarzan might be the title character of this movie, but with her humorous antics, Turk steals more than her fair share of scenes. Oh, I thought I would never see you again! Number 6, The Sanderson Sisters, Hocus Pocus Franchise. Oh, look. Another glorious morning. Makes me sick. You wouldn't think that three child-stealing witches could be so funny, but Winnie, Mary, and Sarah Sanderson manage. Between their failed attempts to capture or kill the young heroes and their agitated dynamic, hilarity regularly ensues. Why, why, why was I cursed with such idiot sisters? <laughs> Just lucky, I guess. <laughs> Winnie is pretty much the ringleader, despite lacking the prerequisite qualities, and Sarah and Mary are admittedly kinda dopey. As a result, they aren't the most well-oiled team of evildoers, with Winnie frequently getting annoyed by her sister's antics. Dost thou comprehend? Well, you explained it beautifully, Winnie, the way you sort of started out with the adventure part and then you sort of slowly... Explain what? It's... Come! We fly! Lucky for us, Winnie's annoyance at her sisters just adds to the humor. Also, their tongue-in-cheek musical numbers are an absolute hoot. I put a spell on you, and now you're gone. Oh, 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 my on you. Number 5, Megara, 
Hercules. Well, thanks for everything, Herc. It's been a real slice. Meg's sarcastic and cynical personality is one of the best parts of this movie. Many of the other entries on this list are more obviously funny, be it through their use of physical comedy or over their outlandish behavior, but Meg's dry wit and deadpan delivery are much more subtle, making the laughs that much more profound. Phil's got the rest of the day pretty much booked. Ah, Phil Schmill, just follow me out the window, round the dumbbells, you lift up the back wall and we're gone. A lot of her jokes might have gone over your head as a kid, but if you watch the movie again as an adult, you'd probably pick up on all the feminist humor you missed before. She is the feminist hero we all deserved. I'll have to ask you to release that young... Keep uh, moving, Junior. ...lady. <sighs> but you... aren't you a damsel in distress? I'm a damsel... I'm in distress. I can handle this. Have a nice day. Number 4. Dory, Finding Nemo Franchise Dory is the yin to Marlin's yang. She's bright and optimistic, and Marlin is not. Hey, Mr. Grumpy Gills. When life gets you down, you know what you gotta do? I don't wanna know what you gotta do. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. And the fact that she's the total opposite of him provides a lot of laughs in this instant Disney classic. What is it about two differing characters annoying the heck out of each other that's just so funny? Of course, her fast-talking demeanor and her forgetfulness also provide much opportunity for laughs. His son Bingo, Nemo, Nemo was taken to, uh, Sydney. Sydney. Yes, and it's really, really important that we get there as fast as we can, so can you help us out? Even funnier, however, are her random and surprisingly useful skills like speaking whale or reading human, which she always just so happens to remember at the exact perfect moment. Escape. I wonder what that means. It's funny. It's spelled just like the word escape. Number 3. Roz, Monsters, Inc. franchise this monster is so deadpan and nonchalant about everything that she can make you laugh by saying nothing at all. She hilariously rebuffs any and all of Mike Wazowski's attempts to establish any kind of friendly relationship with her. I'm watching you, Wazowski. Always watching. She might handle the administrative tasks while other monsters handle the scaring, but she's easily the most intimidating of the bunch. You don't know fear until you fail to turn in your paperwork to Roz. That face of hers, it just makes my heart go... <coughs> Hello, Wazowski. Fun-filled evening planned for tonight? Well, as a matter of fact... And I'm sure you filed your paperwork correctly. For once. It must take a woman with a good sense of humor to tolerate all the shenanigans that go on at Monsters, Inc. Your colleagues might not get you, but we're laughing with you, Roz. None of this ever happened, gentlemen. And I don't want to see any paperwork on this. Number 2. Edna Mode, The Incredibles Franchise This fashion designer's enthusiasm and passion for super suits alone is the source of many laughs. You designed it. I never look back, darling. It distracts from the now. First off, she looks like a mad scientist. Wild and sporting a devious smile, with fire reflecting in her giant glasses as she shows Elastigirl the suits she's made for all the Incredibles. And who could ever forget her famous No Capes monologue? You can't generalize about this. Meta thing. Man, Express Elevator, Diner Guy, Snag on Takeoff, Splashdown, Sucked into a Vortex. No Capes! It's absolutely brilliant, and yet she somehow manages to be simultaneously over the top and understated. Her general sassiness and mumbled comments are just as hysterical as her dramatic rants. Making us laugh out loud is Edna Mode's superpower. Yes, I'm sure your gratitude is quite inexpressible. Don't ask me to do it again, darling. My rates are far too high. Uh, uh. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Yzma, The Emperor's New Groove She is evil, she is murderous, and she's absolutely hilarious. And when it arrives, <laughs> I'll smash it with a hammer! It's brilliant, 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 I tell you! Yzma's attempts to capture and kill Emperor Cusco are brilliantly half-baked and everything from the sound of her voice and her treatment of Kronk to her general annoyance and the absolutely mad look on her face will keep you laughing throughout this whole movie. Hey, that's kind of like what he said to you when you got fired. 
I know. It's called a cruel irony, like my dependence on you. Let's not forget her time spent as a kitty cat, either. Her adorable appearance and high-pitched voice only make her villainy that much more hysterical. The sound of her kitty cat evil laugh is sure to leave you in stitches every time. And once I turn back into my beautiful self, I'm going to kill you! <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.